Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome and thank you for joining today. My name is Brooke Basie and I am the marketing coordinator at Estimating Edge. Today, Joe Bettit, who is one of our senior training and support specialists, will be going over how to navigate fireproofing in version 12, followed by Ryan Bogert, who is the director of product and customer success, will be going over questions. Before we get started, we have a couple of housekeeping items. All lines have been muted, but we will answer questions after the webinar. To ask a question, enter them in the question window. We will answer these at the end. Joe, next screen, please. I will send you an email that has a recording link. The recording will also be available to watch on on demand on our website. When you leave the webinar today, a pop-up window will open with a three question survey. When one of the questions is what topics you would like to see in upcoming webinars. We'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks everyone for joining. Joe, let's get started. All right, thank you, Brooke. And thank you all for attending today. Now, what I'm about to show you today is going to look a lot different than version 10. But when you get past the look, you'll find that the flow is the same as what you're already used to and know. But before we do that, let me just give you some general screen information here. I'm sitting here with a list of jobs here at the top. It shows me the company and my name and that I'm connected to the cloud. Over on the right hand side here, you can see that I'm connected to my license manager. If that turns red, then I don't have any connectivity. This red and white question mark is a backdoor to YouTube where you can watch various videos on version 12. This little button here takes you to a backdoor to our, our knowledge base where we have basically the same YouTube videos, but we also have some written articles in there. And this one's especially important for your company because this is the back door to your administration portal. This is where in version 12, you can add new users to your company. You can give them various privileges on what they are and are not allowed to do with estimates or even on your portal itself. This is also where estimators will go to download the latest version as we come out with updates. So that's all going on right here at the top. Over here on the left-hand side, you see the menu, the words. Probably a nice one there is to click options and go to desktop sharing when you need help so that we can do that ISL screen share and see your screen. And then these little rectangular things are breadcrumbs. All right, these are similar to the navigation tabs that we had in version 10. <clears throat> when you start a job, the breadcrumbs will expand as we get into the job from left to right. The one on the right-hand side is directly into the database for making changes to groups and various things like that. Now I can rearrange these jobs various ways. I can sort them just by estimator, I can see them in alphabetical order, all sorts of things that we won't talk about right now. Just to let you know all that kind of stuff can be done. Most of the action is going to take place on the upper right hand corner of my screen. And I can do things like view all the bids, come in here and just view all my bids or various other options that we've got available to us in there. But now we're going to actually start a bid. To do that, I come over here and I click the plus, which takes me to the intro window where I can say FP webinar. All right. Notice that over on the right hand side, the edge already knows that I'm the estimator because I signed into it. If I'm assigning this to someone else in my company, I can hit this button and assign it to someone else. But right now we'll just leave that alone. Now this is one of the differences in this version and version 10. In version 10, 
you would start the job up and then you would go into the background image manager after you did all that to bring in your images. Here in version 12, you want to bring your images in right here. And to do that, you come down here to this add images button and you click that. And this will take me to the file explorer in my computer. Very similar to version 10 that way. You still have to get the images in your computer somewhere before you can bring them into the job. I'll come over here and select a particular image that I want to work with. Now, this is the only one I really need to work with, but I'm going to bring in some others just to show you some other features we have. So I'll come up here and click Browse again, and I'll just open up another job temporarily and go ahead and bring in a, a few of these images. So you'll see them populating over in the left-hand margin as they're coming in. You see this little green line at the bottom showing me how far along it is on bringing in the images. One of the differences in version 12 is it won't clog up so bad if you have multiple images that you're bringing in like 10 did. So you can handle more images as well as more types of uh, PDFs without issues like you had in version 10. So here we've got these little thumbnails. Can't see them real well, but if you single click on any one of them, you get a preview over here on the right. There's a couple other things I can do here with these images. I'll go ahead and select a number of them just by clicking this little box on the image. And let's say I wanted to create a page for all of those. I could come up here, hit Manage Selected Images, and tell it that I wanted to create a page for that. I could also assign a scale if I want. Now, I'm not going to do that right now. Instead, I'm going to delete the images that I've selected. So to do that, I come up here, and I click Delete Selected Images. All right, so now I'm just down to the three images that I'll leave in here. These two are just going to be in the job. This one is the one I'm going to create a page and measure off of. So since it's a single image, instead of using the select and all that, I just come over here when I've clicked on it and I click up here where it says add page. When I click that button over on the right hand margin, the page title appears. You have to have the pages appear on the right hand margin or they will not become pages in your job if you're trying to do it here. There's a couple other places you can do it, but if you're trying to do it here, that's the way you do it. I can rename this page. I can do a few different things with it. I'm not gonna bother with any of that now. I'm just going to come down here to the bottom and click the continue so that it will start my job up here. And here we are, I'm now sitting on the scenarios breadcrumb for this project. To move forward, I hit this blue arrow. And every time I click it, I move forward just a little bit more. All right. So here we are, we're on the conditions uh, breadcrumb. And here is the pages breadcrumb. This is the page title up here of what this condition screen is for. This is the pages breadcrumb for the section one, which is the section that is in scenario one, which is the scenario for the job called fireproofing webinar. If I wanted to move backwards, I just single click on the breadcrumb and it moves back. If I want to move forward, I use this arrow instead. Now I'm going to stop at pages here because something's a little different than it used to be. Up here, I actually have two different icons. This one that says PC is for project conditions. Now, Ryan's going to be doing a webinar on that in just a few weeks. So I'm not going to deal with project conditions today other than to let you know that it will be a great feature for fireproofing because project conditions allows you to create a reference page put all your surfaces on there and then measure them 
on various pages out at your drawing screen without having to copy those conditions to other pages in the project. But that's as far as I'm going to talk about project conditions today. Instead, I'm going to click this button, which shows the page title of the image that I imported. And then I'll go ahead and click this to get to my conditions. So here we are. I'm now ready to go ahead and bring in some steel. This is almost identical to what you did before. It just looks a little different. I come over here, I click this plus, and I get this screen. If it took me to the group database, I would just click the surfaces tab and that would bring up my surfaces one. Now we enter the steel the same way we did in version 10 by putting it in without the X and putting P for primary, S for secondary, and just keep going. Notice what's happening. I'm putting that in and I'm hitting the enter button. And when I do that, it's automatically adding it behind the scenes. All right, if I know the code, I can do that. If I have to select it, I've got to click a couple more buttons. I'll go ahead right now and just add one more. So I've got three pieces of steel in there. To get out of this mode, I either hit X up here or I hit the escape key and it takes me out and I've got the three pieces of steel that I'm going to measure. So now I'm going to move to the drawing screen. To do that, I click this arrow here. I could also come up and click this one here, which is the takeoff screen. Either one, I'd like using this arrow. <clears throat> Excuse me, so there we go. <clears throat> and now I'm out at my drawing screen. You'll notice over on the left-hand side here, I've got pages and I see my various conditions. I'm on my 18 by 40, which shows up here. It shows up at the tab up here and it shows up over on the right-hand margin, all right? Here's a cool feature that version 12 has. Let's say I want to zoom in on this area. I move my mouse pointer there and I roll my scroll wheel and I can zoom in or out just by moving my scroll wheel. It's nice to move your mouse to where you wanna go first because the edge is trying to center the screen wherever your mouse is. So I can still do that. I still have the, the, the bird's eye view down here and some other things, some other ways to zoom. For now, I'm just going to click it here and zoom in a little bit on this and leave this ready to go. All right, now, I need to give it a scale. Scale has not been set. To do that, I come down here, I click scale. I tell it I want to calculate the scale and I touch down the endpoints of a known dimension. When I do that, I can go ahead and enter the length. This is the same way as version 10. If it was 20 feet, three inches, it would be 20 foot mark, three inch mark, no spaces, no dashes. If it's just 20 feet, I can leave it like that and hit okay. It says my scale is one inch equals 4.16 feet. Now that's different enough from a quarter inch that I better leave it or I may end up with some mistakes on my quantities. But I could come in here and change it if it was close enough to quarter inch scale. But I'll leave it right now. I'll hit okay. And now I'm ready to measure my 18 by 40 beam. Now I've got a number of drawing properties over here. And to turn them on or off, you just single click them. When they're off, they're green, they're brown. When they're on, they're green. I like snap, ortho, and bleed through or x-ray, whichever you prefer to be on. Ortho now is in 45 degree increments instead of 90 degree increments. So that works a lot nicer with many plans. So I'll leave these three on and I'll show you this one in a little bit. I'll go ahead and measure this first beam. All right, there it is. If I wanna to move to another beam, I can hit N for next or P for previous like I could in version 10. It automatically moves me down to the next piece of steel. And then I can go ahead and put that in. If I want to replicate that, I can hit the replicate tool up here. And every time I touch down, 
it puts more beams in. Now, what if I want to get rid of some of those? I can come over here and I hit the undo button and I can remove the last thing I did. If I go too far, I can hit the redo button to get it back. And then I can just go ahead and measure more steel the same way and use my replicate again to keep going. All right, I can also just click on the beam over here and then just measure it that way also. All right, now that's how I can measure just what I already brought in. What if I need to add some additional steel out here? Well, this is my toolbar right here. If you hover over any one of these, you can see what it says. But I need to change that so that I can insert a piece of steel. To do that, I come up and I click on conditions or the page title. And that gives me a slightly different toolbar. And then I can click this plus and I can type in the next piece of steel that I want. So I'll go ahead and put in another one of these. Now what happens, notice it already threw it in the tree. What happens if I put in the wrong code? I hit enter, it doesn't beep at me like it did before, but it doesn't bring anything in, it just kind of stares at me. So when I do that, if I don't know the code, just put what you know is in there. For instance, I want a deck, I know it starts with a D. And then when I hit search, what the edge does is it goes out and it looks for all the pieces of steel that happen to have a D in the item code. Deck happens to be one of them. So when I click this, I can see my different decks. Now notice what I did not do. I didn't type in DT1 like I might normally do. So because I'm selecting it out here, it's a little different. When I click it here, I have to come over here and hit add, which throws it over to the right-hand side. And then I have to hit add to page. And then that adds it into my tree over here. All right. Now I want to be able to see the different colors in here. So I come over here and I click this gray non-current and everything lights up so that I can see the stuff that I previously measured. Now I'm going to come in here and just add in a few of these. I'm going to throw one in here too, just to get a little bit more footage. And if I wanted to change the color of that, all I have to do is click this and change the color. If I want to change the thickness of the line, I can change that right here. If I want to change the pattern, I can do that also. All right. So you've got this right at your fingertips instead of having to go into condition properties. Now, if I needed to go into the properties, I still have my editor button there that I can get to, but we won't do that right now. I'll just go ahead and click down here on my deck and my deck doesn't have a very nice fill pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and change that so it does. Here's another thing, even though I don't have auto pan turned on, the edge will automatically pan if I am in measure mode, if I'm beginning to measure a line or an area or something like that. If I want it to move a little faster, I can just use the scroll bar and move around that way. Notice also it's shading in the area that it's going to calculate. That's a little different than before. So when I'm done, I can either hit the enter button like I did before or right click and hit end shape. And it goes ahead and fills all that in. Now, how do I deduct an area? This is my area button. This is my deduct. I click this and I go around this. And then that takes out that area. All right, now that's all I want to do with the drawing screen for now. One of the nice things is any of the image screens, the image manager or the drawing screen, to get off it, I can just click that X. Now here's something else I should have mentioned. The edge is now designed to work with two screens. That means instead of doing what I did, I could have had all of this on another screen and you would be able to see your quantities adding up here as you're measuring on the other screen. I've got them both on one screen now to make it easy for you to see them. 
If you do use one screen, because the edge is designed for two, sometimes it will flip the screen that you don't want up to the front. And then you have to use your alternate tab key like you would in other Windows programs to flip it to the right screen. But for now, I'll just go ahead and hit the X. And here I am, I'm back. I can look at the various pieces of steel that I have in here. Now notice they are not in size order right now. So I'd like to do that. Now we could do this in version 10, but it's just a lot easier in version 12. I come over here to my toolbar and I click on the arrow next to that gear and it brings this up. I can tell it I want to reorder the surfaces. Hey, while I'm at it, let's change the thickness of the line. I'll say I want to change all the lines to a 50. When I hit OK, the edge rearranges the steel and it changes my thickness of my line so that if I were to go out here to the drawing screen, I see this instead. So that's how that works. All right, let's go ahead and add our calx condition. To do that, I come over here and I click this. Now the edge, the last thing I was doing was entering steel. So it's sitting here like this. I have to come up here and hit the tab for groups, come down to the appropriate group that I want and hit the add key because I'm selecting it and then hit add to page and it brings it in and opens up the properties. This is basically the same information that you're used to in version 10. There is one other nice little feature that we didn't have in version 10. And that is if I put in a master hours here, I can check a couple boxes and have that hours automatically fill in for me. And you can preset that in your groups if you want also. So they gray out and automatically fill in. The other ones I can go ahead and change on my own if I want to. All right, so that's how that works. If you know the UL number you want, you can type it in. If you don't know the UL number you want, I recommend just wipe out what you have here and then hit the three dotted button. All right, that'll take you to our fire test database. Then you can come in here. And if you know part of it, like Y7 and hit enter, I can get it that way and narrow it down a little bit for what I want. And select that and bring it back in. So that's the way you can do that. I've got my flute fill factor is the one that's highlighted is the one that I'm doing. You still have to enter the thickness for the deck. You still have to enter the thickness for the joists. Nothing has changed that way. I come over to my rates tab. This looks pretty much the same as before. In this case, I'm going to zero out my bags per day so that I'm not using subcontract labor, but using hourly labor. According to your database, if you've got a relatively newer one, you have that option available to you. And when we're done, I click OK. The edge thinks for a couple seconds and it takes me back and it shows me the board footage that I've got in there. All right. Now, what if I needed to adjust the thicknesses of any of these? Well, we could do this before, it's just easier now. While I'm sitting on the calx condition, I come over here to fireproofing adjustments and it takes me out to a screen where I can see the various thicknesses and I can just enter in whatever I want to. I'm gonna go one up, one up higher and one down so you can see how that'll look. And then I hit okay. And then it recalculates and gives me my new board footage. Let's say I had a piece of steel in here that I hadn't measured. Uh, let's go ahead and just do that so you can see what that looks like. All right, so there we go. I've got a piece of steel in that I didn't measure. As a result, it's still red. That's one way to know that you didn't measure it. Also, that little orange button says it's got uh, the calculation doesn't have a quantity. So it's trying to tell me there's my little troubleshooter. It's a little different. You hover over the individual line item to see what your problem is. I'll go ahead and delete that one by coming over here and clicking uh, the trash can. And now, 
This one tells me that pricing and labor isn't complete. So pricing, labor, recap, reports, all four of them right here for easy access. I hit the pricing. It takes me out to the pricing screen. This is almost identical to what you did before. I can come down here and I can put in a number. Notice if it's red, it's got a problem. When I click on that line over on the right-hand margin, I can tell what condition it came from, if it only came from one. And I can tell what the problem is. All right, I'll go ahead and pop a number in here also. And then I'll move to my labor screen. This is where I can change my productions for my spray crew and other things if I'm using hourly labor. When I'm done with that, I go out to the recap screen. And if I don't have any other subdivisions, I'll have this fireproofing subdivision. Here's my total price. Here's my price per bag. Here's my total bags. If I need to change one of these, I can just double click on it. Double click on it again, come down here and put whatever new numbers I want. Hit save a couple times and it goes ahead and makes the changes so that I see all that. So that's the recap screen. Now let's look at the reports. I come up here and I click reports. Now before, I'm gonna get rid of these so you can see how that works in a minute. Before, we could preview the text reports, at least some of them. Now you can preview any report. So I hit that little play button or run button, and it takes me out there, and I'm looking at my recap report. I wanna look at a fireproofing report. This saves so much time from having to go into Adobe and all that kind of stuff. Now I'm looking at my fireproofing report and I can flip to my next page and see my hourly ratings and UL designs that I use for that. How about a spray chart report? This has got a few extra features, okay? Uh, the background image, of course. In this case, I'm saying just print the area that I did take off in. Paper size, whoa. I can go up to 34 by 44 on paper size now if I want. That'll make that a lot easier. Print thickness on drawing. Well, you'll see what that does. And I have a font size in here. And then color assignment. This allows me to, if I want to, set the sequence of what colors I want the thicknesses to print for. I'll leave it the way it is and just hit OK here so that I can see what that does. So here is my spray chart report, okay? A little hard to read. I'm gonna make this bigger so you can see it easier. All right, so what you'll notice is besides the lines being different colors by thickness, you'll notice that there are numbers here with corresponding to the color of the beam. That's a one inch, a 13 16 So it's showing me the thickness right on the spray chart that I need to spray these beams if I want to see that. If I go to my second page, I still have my legend like you're used to seeing. Ha, huh. I also have the bag count listed right there, which is a nice new feature. All right, I just wanna show you one other report and that's the fireproofing totals report. This fireproofing totals report can now, if I have multiple pages, subtotal each one of those. And you know what? I wanna show you the fireproofing report too. This looks just like what you are used to. But when I do this, and, and like in version 10, if I adjusted any of the thicknesses, I've got the plus next to the ones that are higher and the minus next to the ones that are lower. All right, now, if there's certain reports that I like to use all the time, I may want to put them in a favorites category. And to do that, I just single click on any one of these. And it brings it over here. I can select 
these in whatever order I want them to print in. And if I want to put all of them in one PDF instead of four or five or 30 PDFs, if I got a lot of pages, I just hit generate PDF, print selected. It asks me this, I'll just call it a webinar. And hit OK. It's going to ask me a few questions. So you have to pay attention to that and answer the questions that it's asking you. But then when it stops asking questions and it goes away like that, the little circle goes away, then you know it finished up printing all the reports. You can then escape out, come in here, open that up. And now what I've got is I've got one PDF with all of the reports together. That's a nice new feature. Now that wraps up the basic operation, but there is one important thing that I still want to show you. And that is when you're done, you have to check the job back in. So what in the world do I mean by that? Well, first of all, to check it in, I want to move back to the scenarios breadcrumb. So I go back to the scenarios breadcrumb and I have this option to check it in. Think of going to a library. If you go to a library and you check a book out, and then I come in that library and they only have one copy of that book, and I try to check it out, they say, oh, I'm sorry, it's already checked out. You can't get it right now. So I can't get that book until you check it back into the library, and then I can go check it out. In the same way, most of what I've been doing is just local on this particular computer. So to get it back up into our cloud for safekeeping, for backups, for being able to look at it on another computer, I check the job in. Once I do that, now that's accessible. You could go to another computer that's got the edge on and check the job back out and make other changes to it and then check it back in that way. So the rule of thumb is, if you're gonna walk away from the computer for more than a couple of hours, check the job back in. We're saving a handful of backups of that thing also, so we have some different iterations of it. So that's another nice thing. So that pretty much wraps up what we were going to talk about today. So I'm going to turn it over to Ryan for whatever questions you have. Go ahead and take it, Ryan. All right, thanks a lot, Joe. Uh, yeah, let's get started with some questions. We do have a few here. Uh, Cedric is asking, does this version allow takeoff of multiple hourly ratings for a single member type on the same page? And the answer is no. And quite honestly, that is not something on our radar to do. Uh, with everything else we've got going on, uh, it's just pretty messy to do that. So what we do instead is the same thing we did in version 10, where you, you could go ahead and uh, just create another page and then from creating that other page, you can go ahead and uh, put your other stuff on that other page. All right, and um, another question from Cedric. Um, does this update allow you to customize your pricing breakouts? Well, that's a loaded question. <laughs> Not sure exactly what you mean by that, Cedric, uh, but... Uh, uh, we do, uh, I mean, you know, you're looking at things by page and different things like that. So I would encourage you to uh, let's talk after the webinar and see if we uh, if we can do what you're looking for. All right, perfect. And and uh, another uh, great question from him. Um, the, uh, you've already kind of answered this, uh, but I'll, uh, maybe for those that didn't see it, you can show it again. Does this version allow you to set up colors and line types for spray thicknesses to be used consistently for every job? Spray thicknesses to be used consistently for every job. Well, the line when, color, yeah, the colors and line styles uh, from the if report. You're report. Right. If you're talking about the spray chart report, what you can do through that is you can 
you can set up the sequence of colors. Now, what that is not doing at the moment is, you know, the, the thinnest piece of steel on one job might be a half inch and on another job might be three eighths. So in this case, they're both gonna be green uh, because that's the thinnest piece on the job. Uh, at this moment, if you wanted to actually have different colors that are always assigned to the same thing, you would have to go back and watch that webinar Mike Mal did in version 10 and do something very similar to that. All right, perfect. And while we're on the um, subject of reports, uh, there was a question about the possibility of exporting those reports um, to Excel, Word, PDFs, you know, all of those different options. Great question. Thank you for asking that because that was one of the things I dropped the ball and forgot to show you. So here we are. I'm out here at this report. Uh, quite honestly, I haven't tried to do this with a drawing report, so I don't know what happens there. But when it's a text report, I come over here and I click this little export button. I can export it to Excel, PDF, or Word. And it'll go ahead and shoot it out there in that format. So that's a nice new feature that we have right there available to you. All right, and next, um, you again, this, this you've kind of already answered, but uh, I'd like to just show it one more time. Uh, the question from Tom was, can you rearrange the conditions to put them in a different order? Well, you can, but most of the time, the condition order that you want them in is probably the size order. And the easiest way to do that is to just go ahead and click on that, you know, rearrange up here that I did earlier, where I click this and I hit reorder surfaces. However, if you prefer doing it manually, you just click on the piece of steel that you want. You come over here to the right and you hit the up or down arrow and you can move that. We do have shortcut keys for that, but it's not the same as version 10. I think it's a control plus and a control minus that'll allow you to move that up and down one way or the other. So thanks for asking that question. Uh, right, and let's see, Carl um, is, is asking about checking in. He's asking what happens if you forget to check a job in once completed? Well, it'll just be sitting there on your computer until the next day as long as your hard drive doesn't crash in the meantime. Uh, so uh, what you don't want to do is get in the habit of not checking jobs in. Now, I don't have this checked in, so watch what happens when I get out of the program. I get this message. You have two bids uh, with scenarios that are not checked in. And it asks me if I want to check them in. If I say, if I say yes, it's going to let me, it's going to kick me out of the program anyway. But if I say no, it brings me back here and I can go ahead and then check it in. The safety valve is if you get that message, oops, go ahead and go check them back in. If you're not sure what bid it was, come on back here to bids and come over here and flip to uh, view all my checked out bids. And that way I can see which bids I forgot to check in. Then I can just move forward to the scenarios breadcrumb and check my job back in. So you wanna check them in each day uh, because if your hard drive crashes, you don't have a backup. And uh, you also don't have any way to go look at that on another computer unless you've checked it in. Okay, and a few more coming in here. Um, Joseph is asking, uh, actually, kind of a two-part question here. How do you duplicate uh, pages and can you reorder the pages once you have multiple pages? You can reorder the pages the same way we reordered the conditions by hitting the up or down arrow up there. Let's go ahead and move forward here so you can see this. <clears throat> I'll be on my reg regular page here. This is my copy and insert. I click this. Now this is a little different. It defaults to whatever I last did. So if I copy everything, the next time I come in here, all these things are gonna be checked instead of unchecked. And then I can click this. 
Now I can rename this to something different. And I can hit save. And it goes ahead and puts that in there. What if I wanted that second floor to be above the first floor? I just click on it and hit this up arrow and move it that way. Now I have to say copying is a little bit different if you have to copy things like I'm on pages. If I wanted to copy this page and put it on another section, everything is one level up. It's just a little different here. Let's, it'll probably be easier if I show it to you from the condition level. If I were to mark a couple of these conditions and I right click and hit copy on them, to paste them, I have to go back one level up and I don't go back into the conditions. I stay right here. I right click and I hit paste conditions. Of course, they were already on that page, but I just threw them on that page again. I'm gonna throw them on without any quantities this time. And uh, no, I don't wanna change the names of them. There we go, it pops that red on me. I come back in here. Now I've got a couple pieces of steel that haven't been measured, even though they're really already on here. So that's how that works. All right, and uh, Richard has a question here. Where can we find the UL test with the steel sizes uh, for that particular test? All right, um, the way you can do that is one of two ways. Um, you can get to the back door through the calx condition. But to do that, you pretty much wipe this out and hit that little three dotted button and that'll take you there. But let's show you the way to get directly into the fire test database. To do that, I come over here to the estimating breadcrumb. I single click that and I get this. These are all my databases. I double click on fire tests. And now I'm right into my fire test database. So if I wanted to do something that had to do with an X, I could come over here and put an X in there and hit enter and or search. And it thinks for a little bit and doesn't do what I want it to. So how about X7? There we go. And now I've got all my X700s right here. All right, so, so I can bounce around in the database that way. If I needed a D9 something or other, I just type D9 and hit enter. And now I'm looking at all my D9s. And then if I wanted to change one of these, if I wanted to copy it, I do a copy and insert. That's what I'll do right now just for testing. I'll do a copy and insert, and I'll just call this one a D902 uh, a new test. All right. And just, of course, you start doing that stuff, you need to rename things so you know what in the world you're doing. I still recommend popping your initials in there for your seal of approval or something so that you know you made a change to it. So here's my new one that I just added in. Now this one only has one piece of steel in it, but if I were to double click on this piece of steel, I can see what thicknesses are in here and I can make whatever changes I need to. I'm going to go ahead and, and delete that one out right now, but that is a nice feature to be able to do that. Another nice feature for those of you that actually uh, have like large intumescent things that you want to put in, it's a whole lot easier to do that uh, than it used to be. You know, here I've got a bunch of pieces of steel over here. All right, all for this one UL design. Now, right now it's in beam order and that's nice. And that's the way lots of times the manufacturers do it. Actually, it's not, it's in WD order. But now before, you know, you get these charts that are in beam order and the WDs are scattered all over the place. It's next to impossible to check it. Well, now you can put it in beam order just by clicking that. You want it in WD order instead. You come over here and click it and now you've got it in WD order, which makes it much easier to check your thicknesses to see if you've got something that's a typo in there. So it's much nicer that way when you're dealing with that. 
All right, a uh, couple more here, and then we'll finish up. The uh, can you show Joe uh, um, how to switch it over a, a calc condition over to uh, Intimescent? Sure. Hit insert. You go get the group that you want. And you bring it in. Now, I don't recommend having two conditions in the same page. You know, you put your hourly ratings in here. I'll just go ahead and uh, put a two in here and, and pop a couple of these in there. Uh, you still have to put your thicknesses in here. You come over here and put, you know, how many uh, mils you want it to be so that it it goes ahead and flips that in. And here it is. But I don't recommend leaving the other one in there because any page overrides would also hold. So if you were doing that, I'd probably delete this one. On the other hand, if you were trying to say that you were trying to do an alternate with a similar manufacturer, you might want to copy the entire scenario and do it all there. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And now I've got this in here. And then that's not really board feet. That's really mill feet when I'm thinking of it from an intumescent side of things. So things look a little different. The, by the way, I forgot to show you, this is the properties button. You click this and you're in condition properties. Okay, so this is where you can tell it how many mil feet per gallon and how many gallons per day or, or do whatever you want that way. And if you put things in in mils, then it'll show it to you in mils. If you put it in in inches, uh, it'll show it to you in inches. All right, so that's how we handle that. And then you can just come out to the pricing screen and price everything out very similar to what you did before. All right, thanks, Joe. Um, we do have uh, several questions here that uh, actually I'll, I'll go ahead and answer just regarding the, the overall process of, of upgrading from version 10 to version 12. Um, you know, some of the questions that were asked were, can we bring our database from version 10 to version 12? Uh, the answer to that is definitely yes. Uh, we do have the ability to copy your estimating database and convert it from version 10 into version 12. Um, so you'll be starting with the exact same uh, estimating database with, with, with all of the, the things stored there that you have. Um, the second question was more specific to the bids from version 10 to version 12. In that case, we do not have the ability to pull bids from version 10 and bring them and open them in version 12. Um, the, the, the differences in the, in the languages between these two programs was just too, too big um, in order to be able to, to have version 12 read these version 10 jobs. So um, in, in lieu of that, what we are doing is, is you know, allowing you to have um, version 10, uh, access to version 10. So any existing bids that you've already taken off in version 10, you'll still have full access to those. Um, and, and then that's for a six month period that, you know, basically nothing will change. You'll have full uh, use of version 12. You'll have full access to version 10. Um, after the six month period goes up, you know, that you've upgraded to version 12, um, version 10 then just um, turns to what we call disable new scenarios or new, new bids. Uh, that means you can still do anything you need to in an existing bid. Um, you know, you can you can go in, make changes, uh, create change orders, add drawings, you know, anything like that that you need to. Um, the only thing that you'll be limited on is being able to start a new bid. So no new bids after that six month period at that point, uh, all of those should be going into version 12. Um, and then uh, lastly, uh, there were some questions about if you don't currently have um, uh, the fireproofing database in in your version 12 database or in your version 10 database, um, or if you have currently the setup where you've got fireproofing separated from drywall, uh, we certainly do have the ability to to merge those um, together. So um, that's something um, that you can you can discuss. Um, the whole process itself should be discussed with your your edge uh, sales representative. That would be the first step is is to contact your your edge sales rep. Um, and, and they can uh, get you all the information as far as uh, what it takes to to upgrade and kind of how the whole process goes. Um, Ryan, we, one we, thing. 
Please, one thing ahead, I, I mentioned, or I forgot, well, I wasn't planning to mention, but maybe that one question was related to that, uh, and that is zones. Do you think I should show anything with that or just mention that we have a zones webinar out there if they want to look at it? Well, we're, we're definitely over on time here. So um, yeah, that you can you know maybe give a quick description of it. Okay. Zones allows you to isolate one area of a floor and get the board footage and bags just for that. Uh, without having to put it on a separate page and everything like that. So you can print reports for that and various things like that. So we have a webinar on zones, but it does work for fireproofing. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Um, there were, I think there might be a couple of questions that were thrown in here at the end um, that, that might not have gotten answered. We will definitely reach out to you if, you're, if your question did not get answered here during the webinar time. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll get a call from somebody um, and, and we can go ahead and, and answer any of those questions that you have. Uh, but again, you can start the process by contacting your EDGE uh, sales representative. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to, to getting everybody moved over to version 12. Um, and that's going to be it for today. Thank you all for attending and uh, have a great day.